What's up, guys? Oh, by the way, look at my new camera. It's my wife's camera. You were talking about yeah, bro. Yesterday? Like now, it's like you see how it's Christmas stuff. Yeah. <laughs> like no dead. dust. <laughs> no dust. <laughs> What's up guys? Welcome back to the show. Welcome back to another video. And in today's video, we are here with Blake's garage once again. Uh, we are doing the full manual conversion, right? Yeah. Um, so this is actually be part one because I feel like this is going to take multiple days. Two, two maybe days, three days. Possibly three. And then uh, considering I have to send out the ECU and stuff, we can still drive the car. I think we can do it without the ECU change. As far okay. as I know, it just might act a little funny. I think it does like a little bit of a rev hang thing. Okay. It's kind of what I've heard. I think you can drive it without. For now. So we'll make that happen. Okay, cool, cool. But yeah, guys, so we have everything. I showed you guys the whole, uh, in the last video um, how we have the clutch flywheel. We actually didn't have it all out. So this is how everything looks when we actually have it out of the car. Uh, I'll explain everything we have here as we uh, pretty much re-put together that transmission. Uh, pretty much pretty much just replacing things to make sure that it doesn't fail on us. So this yeah. job, we only have to do it once. So real quick, I can just go over all the parts. Yeah, let's do that. So let's do that. ZF five speed transmission. This is from a 328i, so basically a 97 and up, I think, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, basically not a 325i. A 325i has a different transmission. This is ZF five speed. That's where we're starting with there. Main component. This, we have a 328i ZF uh, drive shaft. And then an old center support bearing, okay? And this is a manual car, because yes. we have an automatic one. They're actually different. They are different. So we're gonna be installing this. Um, it does have one. It may work. You don't wanna do that, because you're here. <laughs> yeah, you don't wanna might as well it get twice. it done. Uh, we're gonna do that. So that'll be part of it. Um, from there, we have two different clutch lines. Now, really, you only need one. Uh, this one is the OE BMW one. If you see the ends, watch when I do this. See, this doesn't twist at all. Yeah. So you would basically have to spin the whole hose. That, that looks sucks. like a pain. <laughs> that would not be fun. So then we have this one right here. The aftermarket one not only is longer, but both ends spin. See this? Oh. And I'm not spinning the hose, which means you're able to just install it very quickly on the uh, slave cylinder. So you got this, this bolts into the transmission. We're getting a new one. I have one on there. Who the hell knows if it works? <laughs> we're doing it once, we're doing it right. Yes. Clutch pivot fork right here. It has one. Again, this is a wear item. I didn't do it in mine. Uh, five speed swap in my E30. I should have, kind of learned after the fact. Um, and then this has a new pin. This is actually a steel pin and it's gonna pivot right there and go inside. We'll show you guys how to install and all that stuff too. I mean, like we'll, we'll show you guys a full in-depth process, but. This is the Guibo. So this is the rubber piece that basically insulates right here on the end of the drive shaft. That's a fresh one because old ones get dry and they can explode and we don't want that to happen. That's what's on the transmission right now, by the way, guys. Correct. So that is an old one. This is a new one. Boom. Preventative maintenance, you already know. <laughs> Preventative maintenance, do it while we're in there. We got the dual mass flywheel. So we went with an OE dual mass, which means this is a two piece kind of, I don't know, it's kind of like meshed together. There's like some, I think there's like liquid in there or something. It doesn't make those race car noises, right? Yeah, it, basically it, it dampens the vibrations from the clutch like engaging, which is this guy over here. This is a sax clutch, which is an OE clutch. There's really no need for an aftermarket stage one, stage two, stage three. All that's gonna do is is make more vibration, make the car much, much harder to drive. It's gonna sound horrible, and this car is not making crazy power. It's making yeah. stock power. Yeah. So if you were gonna turbo it or something in the future, yeah, okay, upgrade that. But other than that, there's really no point. So we got that. We got a brand new throw out bearing. That's what this is right here, where the clutch will kind of uh, push on the flex plate right here. And uh, that all kind of pushes on the other side and all of that. We'll show you this when it all gets installed into the car. We needed a clutch line. This is the cloth feed line that goes down to the pedal assembly. Which, which we have right over here. here. And then we also have a new master cylinder right here, which is going to go something, something <laughs> it, along the yeah, lines of something like this. That. I don't remember because Nor took it off. But anyway, yeah. that's going to go on there. And this hose actually feeds the hydraulic fluid down to it. So that's good. I'm noticing right now we don't have a barb. So that's another thing we need to order. Oh my Lord. Okay. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so we're going to get that going. Um, I think we just left off on this, the shifter itself. Okay. So this is a really nice kinematic speed shifter, self-centering shifter, self-centering. We, we got to flex that part. It goes to third gear automatically. So the spring loaded, it'll go to third, which means that you're able to hit fourth and third gear without like 
pushing on it or anything like that. The idea is you can go from second gear, push straight forward, it'll go right into third gear without having to like push over. You can get it all lined up and everything like that and it just makes shifts really, really crisp so you don't miss gear. Then we got the shift selector rod. So this is gonna go on here. I didn't wanna stick with the OE one. OE one looks like this. Kind of looks like junk. We could have a little bit of play in it. Didn't know how old it was and all that stuff. So going with that new aftermarket one, we know it's gonna be 100%. Make nice, crisp, clean shifts make everything happen i think that's it yeah that's pretty much uh i mean we're gonna have to definitely add more things as we're working yeah. but for the most part uh that's everything guys and uh yeah without further ado guys let's go ahead and start working on this i think the first thing we're gonna go ahead and do is uh drop the exhaust possibly the drive shaft and then uh I might start working on the interior bits we'll see we'll see first things first guys we're gonna have to unbolt the, the exhaust so actually when we actually put in the new headers uh we actually put in all the bolts right there we got it to pass smog but at this point we need to remove all six of those bolts three holding this exhaust on and uh three holding that one on uh so in total about six right there and then there's a little bracket right over here and there's one bracket in the back well, without further ado let's just go ahead and remove uh those three bolts and those three bolts mind you guys it's actually how i actually messed up one of my headers the bolt snapped off and i had to remove the header to push out the bolt put on a new bolt and then uh because it's basically like a pressed in uh bolt and then you put on a nut on it and the nuts what you have to get out so i uh, honestly guys i would maybe use an impact but if it's really 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 rusty try to break it loose the the, the normal method so you don't actually mess up your header now that we got the six bolts out and the bracket that holds the front, this thing is pretty much just dangling at this point. Uh, before we actually drop the exhaust anymore, there is the secondary uh, cat sensors right here. So we have two right there. Um, I believe these are 22s. We're just gonna go ahead and keep loosening them all the way off. Uh, I'll break that loose eventually. <laughs> but anyways, make sure to get those two out first so when the exhaust falls down, you don't rip your O2 sensors. These are very expensive. So uh, just to put it out there, get those two out. And then we're actually gonna be removing these uh, that actually hold the exhaust up. And I believe there's like one more bracket back there. But other than that, like you guys can see, this is moving. Like it shouldn't be too hard to pull out. These are probably gonna be the hardest thing, but uh, it shouldn't be too hard. And at this point, guys, I think we have one more thing to disconnect back there. Alrighty, guys, so we got the exhaust out of the car, um, as you guys can see right here. Uh, to remove the drive shaft, we are gonna have to remove all these like uh, shielding plates and everything. So uh, I bet I just I think it's a bunch of 10 millimeters. So I'm just gonna set you guys down, remove all this heat shielding right here, and uh, you know just start accessing the drive shaft. As I'm doing this stuff right here, Blake's actually uh, working on the top end of the car. So before I get into this, I'm gonna show you guys what Blake's doing real quick. With us inside the car, we can see the grossness that no one loves to see, and that is the OE automatic. So what we need to do is bypass the neutral safety switch um, and rewire it into the actual clutch itself to where when we put in the clutch pedal, then the car will turn on. If we put the ignition switch on and we turn the key and the clutch pedal is not engaged, it basically the car won't turn on, right? So we need that to happen, but there's wiring down below here. So we're gonna kind of rip this out honestly, like that, I think. That's what we're doing. You can see that we have a sport mode here. So we kind of got to figure that out. We'll kind of just disconnect that. I'm not 100% sure on this stuff right now. So I'll kind of get back to you guys on that, but we will hit the plug for this. This shouldn't kill the car or anything, but that's what the plug is right here. So that may be something that we need to swap on the ECU stuff in the future. But then you can see right down here, we got this guy. Now I'm pretty sure this has the neutral safety switch wires and everything in it. And that's gonna be this stuff all right in here, which are these wires. So we're gonna have to splice, cut, do some stuff in there, and I'll get into that in a second. But for now, we'll try to get this knob off. I don't remember how this comes off. Um, let me get back to you. All right, guys, so something that's kind of crazy is the ignition switch up here, and when you put the key in, right, it actually activates a lever on the shifter itself, which is kind of kind of cool. Um, I didn't really realize it did this, E30s, it's not like this, but this little piece, this little aluminum piece right there, watch it, it'll actually move when I put in the key. You see it move when I put the key in? So that actually engages it to where you can put the car in neutral or whatever, which is pretty cool, but we gotta bypass that. Um, I'll get back to you on where that hooks up 
up here. I see a cable right there where it actually goes in. Now if you see right in here, there's this little selector rod and that has a C-clip on it. So I gotta pop that off and I can get this out. Now that I pop that off, I should be able to push this little selector rod piece over and pop it off. All right guys, so I was in here with an 18 mil. I took off this selector rod. Rod is basically for the transmission. When you push it in, you're going into, you know, park, neutral, drive, all that stuff. Uh, Nor is down below the car, taking off the shielding. Well, he was. Taking off the shielding, he took off the exhaust, and now he's gonna take off the drive shaft. So pretty straightforward on that. This is kind of the more technical side right now. So I'm gonna get all of this junk out of here, and then we're gonna see how this gets wired up. Okay guys, so I went ahead and removed the wiring harness right here. Now this is gonna have all the positions that I need. Now I'm pretty sure if we put the key in the car right now, I put this in the ignition, it is not gonna start. Nope, nothing, right? It doesn't know what it's trying to do. So it thinks we're not in park, we're not in neutral, it thinks we're in gear. Uh, basically we have an open circuit. I'm pretty sure all you gotta do is just short this together. Now uh, that'll be done with the position of the uh, clutch pedal in the future. So we'll kind of extend the wires down there and hook it into the neutral safety switch on the clutch, I'm pretty sure. Uh, for now, we'll probably just bypass it um, at the beginning. And that'll be like kind of one of our final touch things to actually wire that in because it, it's important, but it's not 100% important, right? A lot of people automatically bypass this when they do like a remote start or something like that. Big thing is you gotta leave the car in neutral or else your car starts to creep forward as you hit that remote start and then you, you hit a parked car or something. That's not good. But we're gonna break down the wiring harness right here, right now. So let me uh, get down to it and we'll make sure the car starts again. That's the main concern. Cause we could swap all this stuff, but if the car doesn't start, that's not a good thing. All right guys, so I pulled this out a little bit more. It looks like this switch, I'm assuming this is for uh, luminescence, uh, probably some lights. Yeah, it looks like that. That just lights up uh, what gear selection you're in. So that is right here. That seems like it's just gonna stay disconnected. We can see this whole shifter piece is now kind of coming out. Ooh, look at that. It is one unit right there. And uh, this is that whole switching piece right here, this whole, this whole module. So we'll get back to the wiring here. We can see the actual pocket or bucket for the shifter will actually end up poking through that. We're gonna keep the seal on here and I'm I'm curious I'm curious if actually now nah, that, that's gonna come out I guess. I guess this plastic piece it's like a little a little spacer. So let's oh that's some funk my dude that is some funk look at that cheese my dude uh anyways this little rubber piece we may may try to put back I don't know the new kinematic actually has a little rubber piece, but if you were doing OE BMW stuff, I would leave this rubber piece as you'll have a nice seal. You don't want this wide open. Notice it's wide open now. We could probably see Nora down there. Can we see him? Hello? Wait, what? Hello? I can hear you. He can hear me. I don't think he's got the, the plate, uh, the- Oh, um, uh, the shielding, it's not out yet. Shielding fully off, but we would be able to see him. Also right here, which is kind of cool, I think last time I actually, uh, took off my drive shaft from up here because honestly, it was so easy. I could do it from sitting in the car. If I could sit in the car and take my drive shaft off, shaft off, sweet, you know what I'm saying? Okay guys, so I went ahead and I wire nutted the blue, purple, and the brown black together. That allowed the car to start with the ignition. As far as the backup lights go, and, and I'm gonna wire this into the actual clutch in the future, um, and we'll do that later on in the video. This right here should be the reverse light, so we gotta do this. When we remove it from the transmission, we'll put those together, and then the reverse lights should activate. Tomorrow in the video, we're gonna work on the clutch pedal change out and doing all that stuff. And uh, yeah guys, so that wraps up the top for tonight. We'll go under the car and work some more down there. At this point, guys, uh, we can actually see the drive shaft. And we can actually see where Blake was working up there. He actually moved all the shifter assembly stuff, which is pretty awesome. Uh, so we're actually getting a lot of things done down here. So the thing is, at this point, guys, I need to remove all the bolts right here. That's like, I think it's called like the flex joint or something. Um, so we need to remove all those bolts to that. And then uh, we have the two bolts over here and the two bolts that hold that. And then I believe there's four bolts back there. So uh, yeah. Oh, what's going on, Blake? Hello, hello. <laughs> It's like when we actually hold the shifter and actually turn it. We should actually do one of those reels, bro. 
not change. This should be some sort of meme. That's some weird shit, bro. So at this point, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this. I think if we turn it, yeah, we can actually turn it and remove all these bolts. So there's only six of them. Uh, wish me luck. Hopefully it's not too shabby. Alrighty guys, finally, <laughs> after some time, uh, these bolts were actually not too bad because you can actually put like an impact gun on them. The ones in the rear though, uh, those actually, we used some WD-40 and we used the uh, exhaust as a breaker bar to get those four bolts loose. Once you actually got those loose, uh, there was a bracket for that, two bolts right there. And then uh, this bracket right here, honestly, you don't even need to remove it. I'm literally just pulling this right out of it like that. Ugh, come on, buddy. Almost there. There we go. And that is your drive shaft, boys. Things that we already removed. You removed the automatic drive uh, shaft right there. That is the support bar right above that for the for the actual <laughs> exhaust system. We have the exhaust system out. We have the transmission support out. We have, the, I think, the, the 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 something joint for the drive shaft that connects to the transmission. Uh, we have the uh, O2 sensors out as well. So this is all the stuff that I got out up here. Um, you guys probably saw what Blake ended up doing up here. Uh, but yeah, this thing's really getting stripped apart. But the next step is, guys, is actually removing a transmission. Now I've actually never moved a drive shaft or an exhaust so I'm learning new things every single day and uh, today is definitely one of those days. Now we're actually removing the transmission as well so we got this huge situation here then that's apparently how you get to the bolts. I mean I guess you learn something new every day but that's what my boy Blake said so that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do. So wish me luck guys I'm gonna try to see if I can sit you guys up up in there but I mean I'm barely gonna be able to see what's going on and so if you guys don't see just know that I'm trying to break some bolts loose. All right, guys, so uh, I actually popped, I actually broke loose every single bolt. Are you proud of me, Blake? I am super proud of him. <laughs> I said, you know what, Nora, you can do this. I know you can do this. I believe in you. You I know, you just need somebody to motivate you because yeah. honestly, I never thought I could actually do that, but we got all the bo bolts all the way around the transmission. At this point, what are we doing now exactly? Okay, so on Ugh. automatic transmission, you guys probably don't know this because no one cares about automatic transmissions. However, <laughs> You will care when you're trying to get the thing off of your car so you can throw it in the trash can, right? <laughs> yeah. So there, we have something on an automatic transmission called a flex plate. The flex plate is basically like a flywheel, except it is thinner. What bolts to that is your torque converter. The torque converter bolts right onto that with multiple bolts. Now you have to unbolt that before you can pull the transmission all the way off. Okay, so there's bolts going all the way around the transmission. Now on a manual transmission, we can just pull the transmission bolts off. As soon as we got that, boom, we're done. You we pull it out, you put it back in, cool, good to go. On an automatic, it's a bit more work. So let's show you right here, this little hole, we're gonna go right here. Okay, see this little rubber cover? So I'm gonna pull this off. What this is, is an inspect inspection plate, I should say. Uh, we can get in here and you can find the bolts and then we're gonna have to manually turn the engine over, right, to clock it to the certain location to where we can get in there and undo the bolts. Once we undo, let's call it eight bolts, I have no idea. There's eight bolts in there? Probably. Bruh. There's a few. That's a few. crazy. I would think six to eight. Uh, then it'll be disconnected from the flex plate and then boom, we can pull the transmission back. Okay, well, uh, uh, I would say sounds easy enough, but it doesn't, so. I made it sound easy. Hopefully it's easy. <laughs> Wish us luck, guys. <laughs> okay. All right, guys, so Blake was actually turning the motor right there. So I don't know if you guys can see that bolt. Yeah, if you right want to put here. that ratchet right on there. So yeah, he was turning it right there. And uh, as you guys can see right now, th there's one bolt exposed. So there's a total of probably like eight bolts, right? Maybe six. I'm thinking there's less, because that took quite a few turns. Yeah, so possibly, there's just a few bolts. We're Let's gonna hope this for four. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and take those bolts out. We're gonna keep cranking, take them out, take them out. And then I think once we get all the bolts out, uh, we just have like two lines right, right there. We have two lines connected. I'm sorry for holding you guys sideways. Uh, and then, yeah, bro, I think uh, we'll be ready to pull this thing out. Yeah, we just try not to make a mess. That's, the, uh, <laughs> That's also another goal. That's the goal. put it out there guys uh blake removed two screws up here this is for the transmission cooler and then uh what's going on down here my guy so 
So this is the actual cooler itself. I took out was it, like four little screws, little eight mils. And yeah, this is the cooler. Here's the lines. These go all the way to the trans. Now hopefully, this just snakes out of here. Boom, like Ooh, that. Buddy. That bad boy. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> Bro, I can't, I'm so happy we can just get rid of stuff. I love just <laughs> yeah, deleting sure. things. Saving some weight and whatnot. Um, it could actually make a cool oil cooler, but hey, whatever. I don't I don't know if anyone's ever done that. That would be kind of neat. But I'll pass. <laughs> pass, <you'll> pass. <laughs> I'm thinking we might just catch it in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> We're tired, dude. <laughs> Guys, for Wednesday's worth of work, we pretty much got the transmission almost out. Like, literally, I'm talking uh, just two more things you gotta unplug, uh, drain the fluid, and then drop it. Like, it's almost there but uh we don't want to do it right now because i feel like uh we we'll both feel like that it's gonna make a mess and we're just gonna sit here all night and we're both gonna cry and then uh yeah yeah we'll think about <laughs> things a little bit better in the morning we started <laughs> it we started at about four it's about yeah. nine right now not bad for five hours worth of work honestly yeah 8 45 so and then quite a bit of that was Honestly, even getting the drive sh uh, the drive shaft off the two volts oh, yeah, Nora was, was dealing with. So, bro. you know, it's one of those things. Like these things can be easy, or you could have one bolt that you literally spend like three or four hours on. So uh, honestly, it went pretty well, though. I think it went pretty well. Oh no, I'm, bro, awesome I'm so happy. I'm very proud of him. I was like, <laughs> I was like, you got this. I Guys, need you, you need a, you need somebody that motivates you and tells you you can actually do it. Because I was like, hey Blake, can you come down here? <laughs> like, well, me, but he was like, no, you got this. And I was like, mm, okay, all right, I got this. And then it ended up working out. So, so Nor's never seen something like this. I mean, that's just like okay. some crazy so, like, stuff, bro. I think I might have even had him. Yeah, it was like this. It was about three feet long. All right, so this <laughs> might look weird, right? But why? This is a good idea. Getting to a transmission, this would suck, right? With the ratchet being right here. Yeah, you guys cannot get in there. I always wondered. I only, like, honestly how, always how wondered, how do you get that? And then, uh, yeah, you just. What if you could be way back here? And just be like. <laughs> and just pop it out. Honestly, guys, what's crazy Sick. too, this, honestly, this also looks intimidating, but when you actually remove the transmission, uh, what's it called? Bracket. The transmission drops down a little bit and you can see all this with a flashlight which is crazy i did yeah. not know that so good. you know just looking at it, it seemed like a really intense project obviously um new things you know like for example the bolts when you had to turn the the transmission i would have never known right. i would have kept on yanking so you learn something new every day and i hope you guys learn something in this video but um this one is gonna be a lot easier to install as well it's shorter so you guys probably saw this extension is very long that's because the automatic transmission is a lot longer yeah so uh longer. also that's why the drive shaft are replacing it because this one's actually a longer drive shaft than the automatic one right uh but and yeah I've, I've literally done this i did this pulled this out by myself at pick and pull in 40 minutes now the drive shaft was already like pretty much off okay so the exhaust was the off exhaust the drive shaft was, was off. off okay and literally someone left it for me and i was like <laughs> thank you <laughs> thank you so much so I, I, I ripped it off there and, and the manual uh, transmission is easier to pull out because it's just the bolts and you just pull it out right right and most people get to the point right and then they go what the hell kind of bolt is that right because it's an e oh yes yes and they don't so, have it so they just have to send it home yeah, yeah. yeah. this will come back tomorrow but then if you come back tomorrow blake snatched it <laughs> already got it so. <laughs> and that's why we have this here so uh yeah actually blake got this from pickup a long time ago these are actually really hard to come by now so again shout out to blake <laughs> yeah i had nor scope a couple times seeing if he could find bro i go there the day after and they're gone, gone. like so, literally everything for a manual swap is gone nowadays so it is what it is but uh again shout out to you my dude uh hopefully gonna be catching you tomorrow morning for part two right. next video guys again make sure to check subscribe to blake down below once this thing is complete guys you're gonna be hitting the track with blake he's gonna be showing me how to actually properly drive a car bro right. because i sent the I m4 you can, you can drive a manual but i can, can you drive a yeah manual? there's a that's com there's I, a big difference there say. you know rev match heel toe downshift what to do how to come into a corner all that stuff and we'll be doing that in videos coming soon guys so yeah guys like i said make sure you subscribe to blake's channel down below without further ado guys i love y'all so much remember to stay humble I'll see you guys in the next one peace out